So there's been a lot of talk on TikTok recently about the influencer Nara Smith, who is married to the famous model Lucky Blue Smith. So this is my deep dive on Lucky Blue Smith and the book he published, Stay Golden. This came out in 2016 when he was 18. So I will be diving into his whole life story and this was inspired by all the talk about and controversy, if you can call it that, about his wife Nara Smith. And just to recap, Nara Smith has been getting very popular on TikTok for her cooking tutorial videos and she has been controversial. So she has been associated with being a trad wife and trad wives are very divisive figures on the app right now. And it's interesting because she herself has not specifically called herself a trad wife. She's associated with the trad wives because, well, her cooking tutorial videos are very uh, homesteady, which is something the trad wives very much advocate for. Um, that's one of the controversies. The others, a lot of is, I saw people accuse her of stealing recipes and not crediting it. I don't know anything about that. And also lying about saying, oh, my kids asked for this cereal, so I made it from scratch. My kid asked for sandwiches, so I made the bread from scratch. There you go. Which I'm like, yeah, kids, kids do not ask for that. You just want an excuse to show off and all. And of course, you're in your beautiful dress and makeup, making all this stuff. It's unrealistic and it perpetuates the unrealistic image trad wives are accused of. The other controversy is she is associated with Mormonism. Lucky Blue Smith is a very devout Mormon, and she has been labeled as Mormon, though she herself has never said she practices the Mormon faith. But people have an issue with that since she is half black, and Mormonism has not been very kind historically, and even possibly now, to people of color. So that's another thing. Um, in a YouTube video she posted with her husband, she didn't say she followed the Mormon faith. Uh, she said she had her own religious background, and they said they were not going to impose it on their children, so take that for what it is, if you believe that or not. So that's the, all the interest with Nara. She has been, it's been kind of very fun to make mock her on social media. Um, but also, and then Lucky Blue Smith had a scandal also, kind of. Um, well, when he was 18, he had a kid with his, at the time, girlfriend Stormy Bree, who was 26 at the time. Now, this was in 2017, I think? Or no, 2000, 2016 or 2017? Sorry, no, no, exactly what, no, 2017 is when um, they, they had the kid. But the thing is, it made no news that nobody saw a problem with the age difference at the time and the fact he was still very young. Now people are like, that's kind of creepy that he was an 18 year old having a kid with a 26 year old woman. Okay, it could be grooming, but Mormons very much push to have kids at a young age. I think if it weren't for Stormy Bree, he would have still had a kid with 18, probably with someone his age. Okay, now let's get to the book. So Lucky Blue Smith was born in 1998 in Salt Lake City. And at two, he and his family moved to Southern California in San Clemente, where he lived for a little bit of a while. Uh, then they moved to Montana. Um, why is interesting, he said his dad wanted to start a business and they moved there to save money. How is moving the entire family across the country to save his money? Well, I guess maybe the sale of their house in San Clemente and then had some left over. Not really sure about that. They lived in the grandparents' lake house for a while, so <clears throat> kind of, again, that homesteadish lifestyle. And then for elementary school, Lucky, um, with his family, they moved to Utah, to Spanish Fork, Utah. He was always an athletic kid, and he was very outgoing, and they were in a very tight-knit Mormon community. Uh, there's actually a guest essay by his sixth grade teacher, and it's interesting the teacher noticed the change in it, because the teacher said when they first moved to Utah, Lucky looked very, like, beachy California, long blonde hair. And then later it got cut into his signature 1950s slick back, which he still wears to this day and is known for. Um, the teacher said that was a very unusual style to have at the time, and but Lucky wore it proudly and didn't care how different it was. I wonder if his parents maybe when the move to Utah got more extreme and then they tried to mold Lucky to more like an alpha male-like um, appearance to match like the Mormon faith. Uh, maybe they got more devout when they moved to Utah, or uh, back to Utah, I guess. <clears throat> and he did actually say, well, he said he was bullied for when he had long blonde hair. He did say his dad could let him keep it, said, hey, like, you can either 
cut it off and then the bullying or stand up for yourself. Like he said, he decided to stand up for himself, so he kept it for a while. Um, but still, he ended up cutting it off. And I wonder if, again, that was just because coercion of his dad wanting to fit in more in the community. Um, and the teacher said Lucky had a talent for drumming. Then Lucky talked about how in the modeling world, it's always very different for him because he doesn't drink or smoke. So no crazy wild after parties as typically associated with high fashion models. His dad was one of eight children and his mom was one of six. Uh, the mom used to be a model and the dad actually used to be a musician. Interesting, Lucky would do both. Um, then there's a, there's guests. There's, I say guest essays, they're just a few rambling paragraphs from his parents and his siblings, nothing really special there. And uh, it's interesting because his older sister, Daisy, was the one that wanted to get into modeling, like their mom. And Lucky was dragged along to a modeling agency along with Daisy. Lucky was 10 at this time, Daisy was a little older. He admitted he just wasn't excited about it as Daisy. Uh, so Daisy got signed with Next Model Management, and then eventually Lucky got signed. And this is where it gets a little hard to figure out what actually happened because the he said the agency was interested in the fact the family was like also a band, the Atomics. Um, and then the fam the management agency, next management, wanted the family to move back to LA to for their careers. I'm like, why though? Not because of the band. They weren't popular. No one knew who they were. So, uh, but Lucky eventually got signed, and then Lucky did a test shoot for a big fashion brand in LA in 2011, and the rest is history. He started booking more and more campaigns. Here's what I think more likely happened. Um, I think the parents wanted to be successful entrepreneurs. I think they weren't successful at it. Like, he, Lucky said his dad's business failed and caused a lot of financial problems. Um, they were so tight of money, they didn't have gas money to go to, like, a photo shoot for Lucky, and the grandparents had to help out with that. Um, so I think Lucky felt a lot of pressure to be very successful at something to support his family, because he's the only boy in the family, and, you know, the boy's supposed to provide and do everything, because uh, there's three girls of the forum, and then he's the only boy. So I think when he saw some success at it, he really pushed himself into it to please his parents, kind of like a child actor situation. And uh, it, it kind of sad. I think his parents knew Lucky would had like would grow to have an Instagram like an Instagram face. Um, and I think Lucky, when he was much younger, thought he would just do it because it would help with his music career. Lucky talked about networking with all these high fashion executives at like a young age, as like a preteen and teen. And again, I wonder if he was just turning on the charm factor to make sure he'd be really successful for the sake of his parents, because. He felt so bad at how they, their business didn't do well, and as the man, he's supposed to provide as well and grow up to provide. I also wonder if he ended up having kids so young to like prove to them, look how mature I am. I, I'm super mature. But Mormons do have kids very young anyway. But okay, apart from that, like when he started modeling, his parents, all of his family, was living in like a small apartment owned by the agency for a while. I, I do think he just felt a drive to succeed, and. What helps is him willing to project a very clean image um, in the modeling world, which isn't typical. Also, here's what I suspect also happened, my final thoughts. So I guess this is not part one, this is the only part. I think while he started modeling very young, when he was like 12, I think behind the scenes his parents were pouring a lot of money into a PR agency to get his name out there so he'd still book campaigns and then it could grow into an online fan base as well that would sustain them financially. I think is what was going on. So I think there was a lot more happening behind the scenes he either didn't even know about or just isn't acknowledging. Because um, all this money and fame just on the fashion campaign shoots, and he booked a lot, but he was just a face and he you didn't do any acting or anything else that would bring residual income. Like, I think his parents were putting a lot more investing behind the scenes with PR and networking and all that to make sure he could consistently book shoots and get his name consistently, have his name would get prestige more into adulthood so he would be invited to fashion shows in Paris and then would then be a constant staple in the high-end fashion industry where the money would be better. I think his parents did a lot more investing in him than he was willing to realize, admit. And uh, hopefully that doesn't get passed on to the kids. The ones, the kids, his kids with Nara and his former partner whose names are constantly mocked on TikTok. <laughs>